Well, I hope that you got to watch last week's video message that I sent to you. I know that we didn't have services last uh, Wednesday. We didn't have mission team meetings because of the uh, the weather threats that we had. And it really worked out well that we didn't have meetings that evening because even though there was not any uh, tornadoes in the area, uh, I know that with, in light of the recent storms, that that's what would have been on everyone's minds. And uh, it was better for everyone to stay home uh, with that threat uh, rather than be here. And then, um, but it, I would hope that if you haven't watched last uh, Wednesday's video on how to maintain a servant's attitude, I, I would encourage you to do that. It's only about eight to 10 minutes long. And uh, you can watch that on our church uh, uh, website. Go to the link there. That uh, links you to that particular video, and uh, I hope that you get that information. You know, uh, the uh, summers at Western Hills for many years uh, have been devoted to mission efforts, and we in we increase our 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 mission efforts during the summertime. And this summer is is not any different. In fact, today we we have. Uh, 12 from our church that are leaving uh, for a mission trip to Africa and they'll be there for two weeks. Uh, we're getting ready to begin uh, mission summer in our student ministry and uh, which will involve various mission uh, activities each week uh, that students, it's for students but adults can certainly be involved in that and uh, if you want to be just see Brandon Warner and then also We've got Falls Creek coming up here for our student ministry in, in just a couple of weeks here in June. And that's a good, another great uh, mission opportunity. And before you know it, after Falls Creek is over, we have uh, um, Mission Week and, uh, in which uh, we bring together uh, students and adults for uh, you know, about an eight-day period. And we spend the entire week here at the church, most of the folks spending the night, and reaching out to our community in a variety of different ways and serving in a variety of different ways. And uh, so our summer is full of mission opportunities and uh, either going somewhere outside of our church and our community for those mission opportunities or serving right here. And I want you to be abreast of those and you can find out about the details of each one of those opportunities uh, on our website as well and uh, through our announcements on, on Sunday morning. One of the changes that's going to happen in July that I want you to be aware of as far as your mission team meetings, uh, there's actually a couple. One of the changes is that uh, this year, instead of us having a July 4th uh, celebration uh, for our entire congregation, uh, we're encouraging every mission team to have your own celebration as a mission team and, and to use that as an opportunity to reach out to others and uh, um, you know, share the gospel of Christ with others. And so I wanted you to be aware of that change that's getting ready here uh, to happen uh, in just a few weeks. And then the other one is, is that beginning the 1st of July, uh, we will begin uh, to use a method called the storytelling method in our uh, mission team meetings. Now, I defer to your mission team leader with regards to the curriculum and how he approaches that if he feels like there's a particular need that you all need to meet. But in general, we're going to be using the storytelling method and I'm real excited about that opportunity for our mission team leaders and for you. You know, our, our goal in our mission team meetings is not to reproduce in our meetings what we do on Sunday mornings. And in years past, when we've come to church on Wednesday night, uh, we've had classes and you've gone to a class and the class has been, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 or more people and you've had a, a, a lecture uh, approach to learning for about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and we've done that for years. But with our move to small groups, our goal is for you to be more involved in those meetings and not just be a listener. And the storytelling approach to learning will greatly contribute to that. And so your mission team leader is going to need all the time that he can get with you on Wednesday nights in order to accomplish this. 
And with that change of method, I will no longer be doing, uh, beginning the first Wednesday night in July, I will no longer be doing a, a recording like this one on a weekly basis. I, I would, would probably estimate that I'll do one on a monthly basis uh, to keep you abreast of things, but not on a, a weekly basis. And so I want you to be aware of that change as well and really take note of these two changes as far as uh, what's happening in the life of our church. Well, just a few weeks ago, I would have asked you the question, you know, what were you, where were you on May the 20th when the tornado hit more? Oklahoma, and it's one of those events that marks you so that you sort of remember where you were at uh, when that was happening to our city. And, and who would have thought that just, uh, you know, a, a little over a, a week later, we'd have another catastrophic uh, tornado in the El Reno area uh, and on the western sides of our city that uh, could have really devastated our city even more than uh, when, what happened previously on May the 20th. That tornado in El Reno is now being called the widest on record at 2.6 miles wide. That is incredible when you think about destructive winds that are 2.6 miles wide in places. The wind velocities on that El Reno tor tornado have now been upgraded to an EF5 with some winds topping 300 miles per hour. And I know that there was a great loss of life, and I know that uh, you know there was some significant damage, but I'm so glad that that tornado did not come into the western sides of Oklahoma City or directly into El Reno because what devastation would that have caused if it would have? You know, one of the things that was a tragedy uh, as far as the number of deaths that happened this last Friday night is that uh, three storm chasers were killed and uh, several others were, were injured uh, in that particular storm. You know, I'm so grateful for our, our meteorologists and our weather guys and our storm chasers, especially for those storm chasers who you know, they're outside the wire. Uh, they're on the front lines, risking their lives to warn us about the conditions and the, the direction of the incoming storms. And those weathermen that are reporting to us are really depending uh, upon them for immediate specific direction. You know, uh, as Brandon shared with us this last Sunday morning, a, a, a wonderful sermon, if you didn't hear it, on you know how God frees us from condemnation and I, I would encourage if you didn't hear it go back and and listen to it on on you can get it on our website he he said in that sermon that there is a storm coming that is much more destructive than any tornado and that storm is is the storm of God's judgment when Jesus comes again and we know from the scripture and, and he did such a wonderful job of, of sharing with us that Jesus is the only shelter from that coming storm. If you're not in Christ, you will not be saved from the coming storm of God's judgment. Well, for those of us that are believers and disciples of Jesus, we are the storm chasers. And, and we have the responsibility of warning people and encouraging them to take shelter in Jesus. That's our job. That's our responsibility. And as we have really emphasized over the last few years at Western Hills, that's not just the responsibility of a few pastors that work on the staff of a church. That it's every believer's responsibility to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And so every one of us are storm chasers uh, for Jesus Christ, warning people to take shelter from the coming judgment. Now, the way that we warn people is by sharing our faith with others. Some would say sharing our, our, our testimony with others. In fact, the easiest and most powerful way to share your faith with someone is by sharing your own personal testimony 
or your own personal story. In fact, your, your story of your faith in Christ is the greatest resource that you have to lead others to Jesus. Now, let me tell you a few things about sharing a good testimony with others, and I want to make it as simple as possible. A good testimony tells people the following facts, and I want you to remember this, before, how, and since. Before, how, and since. When you share your testimony and put together your testimony, you want to share with people what your life was like before you received Jesus Christ. Now I know, and I hear people say this, and, and whenever I hear it, I cringe. And in fact, I have to tell you, I'm really disappointed when I hear this. I hear believers say at times, you know, I really don't have a powerful testimony. Or, I really don't have a significant story to tell. And I hear them share that right before they share their testimony. Look, whether you're five or whether you're 50, if you were born a sinner, you have a powerful story to tell others. You know, uh, people can relate to disobeying authority, lying, coveting, stealing, and bullying others just as much or more uh, as they can relate to adultery and murder. And every one of us has a story to tell about the what our life was like before we received Jesus, when we think about stealing, lying, disobeying authority, coveting, being a bully to others in some way, being selfish. You know, for you to have a powerful testimony about Jesus being your Savior, all you have to do is just tell a few stories from your childhood in which you stole or you lied, or you disobeyed authority, or you were a bully to someone, or you were selfish, or you were greedy in some way. You know, if you want to, you can put in a few more stories about your life when you were older, and, and perhaps you want to do that if it would help the person you're sharing with relate to you better. And so you have a powerful testimony of how Jesus saved you because you were born a sinner. Now, when you share, uh, after you share before, you want to share how. And when you share how in your testimony, you want to make the story come alive by telling where you were when you received Jesus, what you felt, and what was going on in your life, what was going on in your emotions, what was going on in your thoughts that caused you to trust Jesus, to forgive you of your sins and save you. And so you just don't want to say, you know, I was saved at age eight at so-and-so Baptist church. That is not a good story. You've got a better story to tell than that. You want to relate these other things that I just mentioned as well. And one caution I would give you when you tell how is avoid Christian terms that unbelievers just don't understand. You need to use words that they can relate to. And then you, after you talk about before and then you talk about how, you need to talk about since. How has being forgiven in Christ changed your life? How's that changed your life? Knowing that you're forgiven in Christ. You want to tell them when you share your testimony how being forgiven has released you from shame and guilt and has given you a desire to help and, and serve others. You want to tell them how being forgiven in Christ has impacted your thoughts and your attitudes and your emotions. Share how being a part of the body of Christ has helped you learn and helped you grow. So you want to share in your testimony. You want to share before, then you want to share how, and then you want to share since. You know, it's not that hard to develop your testimony. The hard part is getting out of your comfort zone and talking with people. That's the hard part. You know, I just thank God that we have storm chasers who get out of their comfort zone to warn us about 
incoming storms. Well, we as believers ought to have even more courage in Christ to get out of our comfort zone and be storm chasers for Jesus. Would you purpose to get out of your comfort zone and, and commit yourself to share your testimony with others? Would you even be willing to commit yourself to share with your testimony with one person who has lost before your mission team meets again next week? God wants to use us for His glory. All He's looking for is people who are available and willing. Let's be those people.